Hey everyone and welcome. We are Next Level Business Advisors and this is Business Stories of Success. If you want to break through and achieve your own business success by learning from other successful business owners, you're in the right channel. For more of our content, make sure you click subscribe and don't forget the bell icon so you're the first to be notified when new videos are added. Enjoy today's video. Hello, hello, hello. You're with Mark Adams at Next Level Business Advisors and um Good to see you here today. Today I'm with Tony Jefferson, the owner of TravelingSessions.com. Do I have that right, bro? Yes, sir. Awesome, awesome. I'm excited to have this interview. I was talking to you a couple of days, a little bit ago, yesterday actually, right? We were chatting. And it's so cool because your business is unlike any other business that I've ever heard of, and you kind of broke down to me why that was the case. So I'm excited to share that with you or with, with people who are listening because people have these ideas and they don't know if it can go about. So this one's going to be really good. Folks, let me stop yakking and let the man start talking. Tony, tell us who you are and a little bit about your business, please. Uh, I said, uh, Tony Jefferson, uh, living down here in Florida. Uh so I started the business, uh, well, let me backtrack. I uh, was in the Air Force for 21 years. Wow. And I spent most of my time overseas, you know, getting immersed in uh, all those different cultures. That really is what inspired my love for travel. So when I retired, I wanted to take uh, my IT experience from the Air Force and my love of travel and kind of merge those together and that was kind of what led me to creating the website awesome awesome and i <clears throat> what i like about that just so we're on the same page right you said your it experience and your love of travel so so like tell us exactly what your well not exactly don't give away the trade secrets but exactly what is your business traveling session.com what do you do so uh uh, before I say, uh, well, the simplest way to think about it is uh, it's a social media website focused on travel, but yeah. I don't like to say that because it's a lot more than that. Okay. So uh, let me give you a scenario to break it down to give you an idea of how it, how it works. Let's say you want to buy a shirt. So you go online. You find a shirt you like. First thing you do is read the reviews, right? Right. So you read the reviews, all five-star reviews. Should be a great shirt. What if everybody that wrote those reviews was tall people that wanted to wear the shirt untucked, but you're a short person that wants to wear the shirt tucked in? Those reviews don't do you any good. Right, right. Mismatch. Yeah. So the problem is that the reviews are focused on the shirt not the person that wants to wear the shirt. And really that's the way most uh, websites approach travel. It's all about the destination. We want to put the focus on the person that's traveling to the destination. That's amazing. That's amazing. So it's almost like customized reviews for the person who's reading it? Yeah. That's the idea that we're going for. I love it. I love it. Now, I'm 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 going to circle back to that because, like, I know you have the IT experience, the IT background, like you said, and you have a love of travel. But how you came up with okay, make this make this into a business, I think it's going to be interesting. But before I get into that, I want to do a little bit of what I call bookkeeping. So now someone's listening to this and they say, "Man, I need customized some customized help like this." How do we find you? Where do we go to find you? Do you have a, a phone number, a website? How do we reach you? Uh, traveling session.com or if you wanted to reach out to me directly uh easiest way to do is traveling session.com contact us we've got a contact form there or we've got links to like all our social media whatever your flavor is we're probably on it that's we hang out on social media all the time so Awesome. Awesome. Now I'm going to do you one more request and ask you to spell your website because traveling session.com might be a challenge for me uh, when I'm using the word traveling. I always forget how to spell it right. So that is one thing I forgot about when I chose the name because 
Americans, we spell it two L's, but a lot of, uh, a lot of countries spell travel, uh, like when you say uh, traveling or traveler, they spell it with two L's. Okay. So it's just uh, traveling, T-R-A-V-E-L-I-N-G, S-E-S-S-E-S-S-I-O-N. Okay. okay and that's what i was trying to get right because i honestly i was like man I, I might be challenged with that one is it traveling with two l's or traveling with one l so yours is t-r-a-v-e-l one l yeah i had to uh, yeah to make sure i grabbed those domains whenever i realized that too oh okay so you have both of them yeah oh cool so one redirects to the other Hey, did you see that? You heard my technical term, right? I, I was I used to do some IT. Yeah, I had that redirect going. Anyway, all right. So let's ask this next question before I go crazy. How long have you been in business? How long has traveling session been around? How long have you been doing what you do? So technically we've been open for about four years. But we're just so This has been a long process because there isn't a website like this around. I haven't found anything like this. So I didn't have like a good like reference to go off of or any type of guidance. So at first it was me trying to use like third party software to try to get the work and uh, that didn't work. And then I, try coding it myself and I was like I, I don't feel like coding so then I had to hire developers fire developers hire developers mm. hire, hire and fire till you find the right ones and so yeah it's been about four years but I think in the last month or two we finally got to where we finally got the platform to where uh, I'm comfortable promoting it wider now I like that I like that so just for those who don't know me personally, and I imagine most people don't know who are listening to podcasts, they don't get to know you a lot, right? Before I became a business advisor, before I became a business coach or an accountant, I used to be a computer programmer. I used to be a developer. And so from experience, I know that that startup time between your, you know, your concept and your go live can take a good amount of time. So I'm not surprised to hear you say, Hey, you know, I tried third party that didn't work. Then I went to coding it myself. That didn't work coding yourself. I, because that's what I did. I know how intense and how long that can be. And that's just to get the initial code out. Right. So it takes a little bit of time before you can actually get your site up and running, but now you got it up. And it's nice because now you can do your full blown promotion. Yeah. So what, what I finally ended up doing was uh, this last time was I finally got everything to where I wanted it, but because there are different parts and different modules to the site, like they were right. different languages. They they talked but didn't talk together well. So I just scrapped everything and just rewrote everything from Whoa. the bottom to the top and now you're rocking and rolling yeah wow wow and we're still building there's still more features coming i like that i mean and hey you're tell, and you could tell me if i'm wrong your, your, your business is a software business in addition to the information side so that means that software always evolves that's just the way it works right oh yeah Cool, cool. Let me ask you this question, and I think you alluded to it, but what makes you an expert in your field? I don't think I'm an expert in my field. Oh, what? Oh, stop. What? Why do you say that? I'm just a guy that... I... Ultimately, what it came down to is the platform that I wanted didn't exist, so I built it. That... I don't think that makes me an expert. I'm just, I wanted something, so I got it. Okay. Okay. How did you decide to make that whole idea into a business then? I mean, because, you know, sometimes we have something or we want something that's not, it doesn't exist. And we say, okay, or whatever, or I give it to myself. How did you make it? What made you say, I want to turn this idea into a full blown business? Because, it because the platform relies so much on community 
Like I said, one of the big the biggest difference between a lot of uh, travel websites and uh, what we do, it's not just me telling you my opinions on places. You've got like people from all over the world giving their opinions and different travel styles and different walks of life and things like that. And that's how we come up and we try to bring all that together in one location. So I think that's what really makes us like stand out. Okay. Okay. Cool. 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 Um, let me pivot a little bit <clears throat> because this is going to be an interesting question for me to ask you because you're a newer business, right? You, you, you haven't been in the game for 10, 20 years. Some of us, I've been in business now for 20 years. Um, so I, I kind of look at it different, but it doesn't mean that my answer is the only answer. How do you define success? Um, for my business, yes, which I don't think I ever, I haven't achieved success yet. Because oh, what well, else could be my next question? Well, go ahead. But uh, I think success for me in my business is when um, I don't have to keep putting my own capital into it. Okay. Okay. But it's just own like self uh sustaining entity. That is success to me. Personal side, mm -hmm. success is being able to do what I want when I want. Okay. All right, now that's where I'm at. Okay. So then that now this is interesting. You said you don't su consider yourself successful. But are you really not successful yet? What would you say? Like when you when you boil it all together, what do you say? No, cuz I'm still hungry. Okay. Uh, I I want one more. Okay. I'm not satisfied. I, I You're not I, there yet. No, no, I'm not even thinking about that yet. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm going to tell you what, I, because I've interviewed so many people. Most people say I am successful, not completely successful, but I'm on the way, right? So like this success is a journey. So if you're not there and you're still hungry, that means that you're in that, that, that hyper growth phase. Now, what are you doing to make success a reality for you and your business then? Well, right now, the uh, the biggest thing is, trying to figure out the marketing. That was one thing I wish I had started uh, earlier, like trying to tell the story of the website. Because it's hard when you're introducing something new. But so that is something I wish I worked harder on, like in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and so what are you doing now? Like to, to change that? What have you been doing? Well, first I had to learn what marketing was. Ooh, okay. <laughs> okay. I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. And then I was just learning like how to best go out and get the word out about my website, like, you know, creating your media kit and appearing on podcasts like this which works out perfect for me, like I said, because it's a new concept and that needs that explaining. This is a perfect format for me. Awesome. Awesome. Do you feel that it's helping you to achieve the success that you're looking for? Yeah, because one thing I noticed about when I do these podcasts, when people ask me, because I have a certain way of thinking about it in my head. Mm -hmm. But when someone asks you a different way, okay, now I have to reframe that. And I have to think, okay, now I have to consider how somebody else might. So uh, doing these, it helps me frame that uh, that message and shape that story to tell people. It, right, right. And the more you do it, it gets easier. Got it, got it. That's really cool. I think there's a lesson that we can extract from this, uh, from your conversation thus far for our listeners and our viewers, hopefully we get some viewers uh, as well, looking at our 
mugs and camera. <laughs> but here's the lesson that I, I want to try to see if we can extract. You said that when I started the business, I wish I would have gotten the word out sooner, right? Why do you think that would have made a difference, getting the word out sooner? Well, not so much getting the word out sooner. Crap. I wish I had crafted the uh, crafted the story into the development of the website. Oh, okay. That okay. Yeah, so when people visit your site, the story is already there for them to understand. Yeah, so a lot of the, that's part of the challenge I'm having now is, because I got the core functions that I really wanted in there, but now I have to go back and uh, make it more familiar to everyone else, something that's more intuitive. Got it, got it. So you're talking like UI almost, right? Yeah. user interface for those we don't do you know a shark tank you watch shark tank yes sir right when they when they when they when they, when they when they drop a concept or something they always say like i'll say oh ui and then on the bottom it'll say ui equals user interface well i'm not that sophisticated so i'm just going to tell you when i said ui i meant user interface but i understand exactly what you're saying I want to ask you this question. I think it ties into what you're mentioning with the development of your story or your, your website and your story, and it circles around mistakes. But before we do that, if you don't mind, I want to take a quick break and come right. right back to it. All right. Do you know what it takes to be successful as a business owner? There are five keys that every business owner has to master in order to be successful. How do I know these keys? Well, I used to say that I made them up, but really, I've learned these five keys in two ways. My name is Mark Adams. I'm the owner of Next Level Business Advisors and the host of the podcast, Business Stories of Success. In the podcast, we discuss success with business owners from around the world. We talk about what it means to them, how they achieve it, and the single biggest quality or personality trait that's needed in order to be successful. As a profitability and growth business advisor, I work with business owners around the country to help them increase profit and or accelerate growth. Now I say or because some business owners aren't properly positioned to accelerate growth. In those cases, we actually focus on honing in on profitability. If you are a business owner and you're excited about improving your profit or accelerating your growth, feel free to download my free ebook, Mastering the Five Keys to Make Your Business Successful. It's found at my website, nlbusinessadvisors.com forward slash five keys that's the number five keys you can also subscribe to my podcast business stories of success and if you're really ready to start accelerating your growth feel free to schedule your free discovery call we'll talk about where you are today what your goals are your challenges your obstacles and i can help you to hurdle some of the hurdles to your own business success join me at next level business advisors and schedule your appointment today Okay, so we're back. So let me ask you this question. What's one big mistake you made in your business journey? The biggest mistake I made early on is not, not have enough confidence to stick to my vision. Like listen to everybody else. Like you go to uh, these websites like, oh, when you start a website, these are the things that you have to do and As I got further along with it, I don't have to do anything but what I want to do. And when I started doing that, one, I noticed I was happier. And when I was happier, it was more work getting done on the website. So, mm. so yeah, if I would give anybody any advice, trust your gut and listen to yourself like because you quickly if you listen to everybody else you'll quickly lose your vision i love that i love that because that's what people are, are tuning in to do to hear these little tips and you're right especially when uh, business is in the fledgling state you will not get a, a a shortage of opinions right hey do it this way or it should be done this way or, you know why don't you try but you have started your business with your own vision in place, right? And so 
listening to every piece of advice can cause you to deviate. So I like that. So you trust your gut. Ultimately, you 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 said when I did it my way, I was happier. Oh yeah. And when I was happy, I got more done. <laughs> right. So there seems to be a link to the joy that you need to produce in order to get results. Oh yeah. Right. Except when it. If I'm doing something that I that I hate, I, I may as well just get a job. Hmm. Hmm. Mm, I like it, right? That's the beautiful part to me about being a business owner. We get to plot our own course. If we don't like it, we can change it, right? So I love that. Let me ask you, what do you think you could have done to avoid the mistake, if the, if it were all possible, of listening to so many different opinions? What could you have done differently? I don't think there was much I could have done. I. Yeah, I think it's one of those lessons you just I had to go through and learn. Okay. And sometimes that's just the way it is. I like I said, I've traveled to a bunch of countries and I had an IT background. It doesn't really qualify me for what I'm doing. Gotcha. Gotcha. So I just had like I said, it's just this is what I wanted. It didn't exist. If I didn't build it, no one else would. So, Gotcha. Let me ask you this question. And this is a question that we ask everyone. Do you think that if you had a mentor, or I, don't, I don't know if you did, did you have mentors along the way, coaches, business advisors along the way? And see, and that's where I, that's where I say you got to stick to your own vision. Like I said, everyone has their own. Like, that's where I had to stop. Especially for me, like I said, because this is a new concept, like there isn't another website like this. And so like everybody's like, and also that goes into where I had to work on craft and that story mm. because that was part of the problem too, because they're not understanding the story when I'm telling it to them and it's a brand new concept. So now they're trying to take it this way. Mm. That's not where I want to go with it. So it, there was a lot to play into it and a lot of it was on me but i uh, mentors and coaches in some aspects would have been helpful but at the same time i think i'm a better businessman for having to go through those fires okay because you 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 feel like the experience is the best teacher for me uh-huh understood understood i mean it would have been helpful to have somebody like help me like get give me the direction on how to get out of those fires <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's funny right yeah it's not bad getting burnt but i don't need second and third degree <laughs> right just a little cinch would have been good enough yeah i hear you i hear you Let me... I, I just need that uh, oven hot Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah, that, I won't do that again. Thanks a lot. Yeah, sometimes we can get lost in the weeds, um, and 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 that can be a, a challenge as well. It could impede our growth. I find that not every business owner works for every coach. Not every coach works for every business owner. Some are good at troubleshooting. Some are good at painting the the big picture. Like my my gift. If 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 I at least what I think is that I'm able to see for a business like what the loop what the pitfalls are and the holes and I try to help them to avoid that right. But others are good at other things. Some are good at motivational things, right? Like okay, look into your soul and see. I'm not really that guy. I'm the guy that says, hey, look, I'm looking at your business. These are the things that I think are wrong. These are what I think you can change. This is how you can fix it. And I do it with an eye on the numbers, the dollars, right? Because every dollar to me counts. So, I, you know, but not every coach fits every person. So like you said, you know, you've, you've had different opinions and what have you. But if you don't have the coach that's saying, okay, this is what you need. And, and so it's finding that match that might matter. Finding the match of a coach can make a huge difference in your business success. You know, it was interesting when you were talking to me about your website and it was in interesting in that you said, you know, I hired developers, I fired developers, I coded myself, I scrapped it all. 
you know, and I don't know what kind of coach that would be. If almost if you had like a project manager who was coaching, it might have been a little easier. So I think what I'm saying, because I'm starting to just go on and on, is that as a business owner, it's really important. And I want, this is for the listeners and the viewers. As a business owner, it's really important that you know yourself. Find what you once you know what you need, go and find that help. I was waiting to tell you that I, I was you were telling that uh talking about the coaches i was waiting to say that is that's that's the biggest thing you have i mean you got to be honest with yourself because uh, one thing i say is to be a business owner takes a level of arrogance now, i'm not talking confidence it takes a level of arrogance because you're saying to the world all these other things that exist i can do it better But you have to know how to check that arrogance as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you yeah. have to be honest with you. You can't do everything. You have to know, like, eh, nope, I need to hand this off to somebody else. This is not my mm -hmm. cup of tea. Yeah. It's an interesting dichotomy. You said a level of arrogance and a level of humility at the same time. <laughs> right? I'm the I'm the man, but I can't do that. Let me get it right. Because kind of what it is, right? I I know that I'm the man, but for this part, I need. Some assistance, right? So it's an interesting chat. Now, if you were to take that, you said arrogance, I said humility. What do you think is the single most important quality needed to be successful in business? Confidence. Okay. Why confidence? I said, you got to believe it. Uh, you've got to believe it. Uh, well, okay. No. Let me take that back. Not oh. passion. Okay, I, I passion. think I like that passion. as much as confidence. But go ahead, why why passion over confidence? Passion, because as a business owner, you are going to get hit upside the head. No matter how much you prepare and plan things out, there's always going to be something that's going to come and just out of left field and just knock you right on your butt and, just, and if you're not doing something that you love you're gonna quit yeah so uh, yeah. i think yeah you got to be passionate about what you're doing that i like that i like it a lot i remember one of my earlier interviews i was speaking and he's a client of mine too amazing guy and he used the word grit He's like, because, and same, but it made me think you said passion, he said grit, but it's like the same thing because in your business journey, you will have problems. You will have failures. And if you're not passionate, if you don't have that grit, you will quit. Right? Oh, yeah. Grit, quit. I'm not going to, okay, grit, quit. If you don't have the grit, you quit, right? So you, you definitely need to be passionate about what you do if you're going to be successful. It almost feels like anybody can start a business but very few can maintain a business. If they don't have what you just said, passion, they'll start it, but they're not going to ne necessarily maintain it because it will come with problems. It will come with challenges. And it might not even be, it could be something on your outside life. Like absolutely money now. Like, yeah. yeah. Do you shove this to the side or and go get another job or do you find a way to but you got to be passionate about it or you're just going to take the easier route as human nature yes right water goes to the path of least resistance right but that's not the way it works in business uh, it'd be nice it, it'd be really nice if like water if, if a business was like a water slide right and the bottom was the the pot of gold you just get at the top and you just whoop, all the way down to the no don't work that way there's a lot of ups and downs in businesses right so that's definitely a challenge i agree with you and so i like your idea or your, not your idea your quality passion 
And I'm saying that because, like I've mentioned, I've interviewed a lot of owners. What I think I'm going to do is make a collage of what everybody's single most important quality is. Because when you combine that together, boy, it's a lot of qualities needed to be successful. Passion is not is not something that you can do without and be successful in business. Exactly. So, yeah, I love it. I love it. Let me ask you um, one question regarding new business owners and you're a newer one, but you've got some years in the game now. So what advice would you give to a new business owner? What advice would I give to a new business owner? I, so many things. except. Don't wait for, don't wait, just start. There's no matter how much you plan, like I said, you, you're going to fail. It's better to learn from them. Go ahead and make, learn from those mistakes. Get them out the way. There's, nobody's ever had like a perfect business launch. Nobody. There are going to be things that you did not think of because it's not your realm of expertise to know about these things. If you can't afford to hire somebody, uh, you're just going to have to take those licks when they come. But to sit back and be afraid of those licks, nah, just go ahead and start. I like it. I like it. And I've had a lot of my uh, interviewees say the same thing. Just got to, like I always say, my mother always said, at some point you just got to jump in the water. And it's funny because my mama, my mama can't swim. <laughs> but she said, you got to jump in the water. At least you're going to find out if you can swim or not. You'll learn really quick. Right. Awesome. Awesome. I'm going to ask you one final question. If you don't mind, we talked about advice to a new business owner. If you can go, to right before you started your own business, what advice would you give yourself? Trust yourself. Why trust yourself? I said, when I first started, I took a lot of advice from, I took a lot of people's advice, but like I said, if I didn't, I would have been a lot further along now if I had just stuck to what I initially thought. Mm. Mm. Gotcha. Like, yeah, no, they know more than me. Let me do it this way. Like, uh, no, that just ended up wasting time. I think um, I think you have to be at the right level before you start taking business advice. Okay. Okay. There has to be a certain level that you're at before you're ready to, to get a coach or any kind of a mentor or any kind of advice. There's, there's stuff you got to go through yourself first. Okay. I like that. True. I agree with that. I, I find that, and, and, and I'm no exception. When I started my business, I said, I don't need a coach. I didn't have a coach for years and years and years. And I mean, the business was growing. It wasn't until I had somewhat of a decent business, my first office, where I said, I, I feel like I've taken this to a spot where if I go any further, I'm going to either destroy myself or not maintain the quality. Let me get help. So you're right. You got to go through certain things and then you have to know yourself and then say, now's the time to make this decision. So I like that. I like that. You have to know when you have to know, like, this is not my cup of tea. I need to hand this off to somebody. Yeah. Or you'll just and what a difference it can make. It can make a huge difference in everything that you do. And I like what you said. So you do have to trust yourself beyond you. You said a couple of things about yourself, which is in interesting. You mentioned trusting yourself. You mentioned being honest with yourself. You talked about having arrogance and humility. So a lot of what you say, at least it sounds like, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that on your journey to business success, you really get to know yourself. You have to know yourself. Yeah, it's been an introspective journey. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I think for most of us for, who are successful are on the path to success, like you mentioned, you, you learn more about yourself than you could ever realize. Right. And if you do that, if you do that, take the time to know yourself, be honest with yourself, have that humility and that arrogance, right? Cause you're going to have to say, I appreciate your advice and you've been in the game for this long and you've done it this way, but I'm still going to go this way. Yep. Right. You have to be able to do all of that. But if you can be true to yourself, then you can be successful in your business. Yes, sir. So I like, I like that. I like that. Hey man, I want to thank you so much for giving me some time today and, and discussing your journey. And I'm looking forward to continuing to see you on this journey to success. I appreciate it, man. Like I said, this is fun. Absolutely. Absolutely.